the student there may be some uh, sound technical problem and uh, objectives by the end of this session we'll be able to review the anatomy and physiology of central nervous system definition of meningitis and classification of meningitis and have a just touch of pathophysiology of meningitis and we'll be able to know some clinical manifestation of meningitis this is the uh, figure dictating anatomy brain divided into three major areas the cerebrum the brain stem and cerebellum this is an anatomical figure showing the skin of a scalp periosteum bone periosteal meningeal dura mater arachnoid and pia mater and this is the brain tissue for cerebri and cortex this is the cortex superior sagittal sinus subdural space and subarachnoid space Structure protecting the brain are rigid skull, the meninges, fibrous connective tissues that cover the brain and spinal cord. It is composed of, there you know, dura mater, arachnoid mater, and pia mater. The outermost layer is the dura mater, and the innermost layer is pia mater, and in between these, arachnoid, the middle membrane. CSF cerebrospinal fluid clear and colorless fluid produced in the ventricles circulated around the brain and the spinal cord through the ventricular system the composition is similar to other extracellular fluids but the concentrations of the various constituents are different against the structure of anatomy structure of a meninges if we look towards here and here this anatomy figure skull dura mater arachnoid layer pia mater and it is brain this is a really very nice figure to understanding the anatomy of the meninges so what is meningitis it's a Greek term meninix, which is meant by which is meant membrane. So when there is a inflammation in meninges, meninges, it is termed as meningitis, caused by either bacteria, virus, or any malignant infiltrations. Gross classification of meningitis, septic 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 that means caused by bacteria most pathogen are streptococcus pneumonia and neisseria meningitis aseptic caused by the viral or secondary to lymphoma leukemia or hiv the nice figure the pathophysiology if we look towards here, bacteria enters bloodstream with by trauma or any other pathway, enters the mucosal surface or cavity by breaking down of normal barriers, crosses the blood brain barrier, proliferate in the CSF, and after proliferation, it will cause uh, inflammation of the meninges. And remember, there are inflammation in meninges, there will be raised intracranial pressure. There are other so many mechanisms will be developed. One of them are increased intracranial pressure. So if we classify the meningitis simply types of meningitis, pecky meningitis and leptomeningitis. Leptomeningitis again divided into 
acute pyogenic, acute lymphocytic, and chronic. And what is bacterial meningitis? Bacterial meningitis causative agents are Streptococcus pneumonia, 30 to 80 percent, Neisseria meningitis, meningitis, 15 to 40 percent, and Haemophilus influenza, 2 to 7 percent. So, whenever we will think a uh, meningitis caused by bacteria. We should remember that these three organisms can cause a bacterial meningitis. So, if you know the causative agents, and if we pay heed to our mind that these causative agents may cause bacterial meningitis, the, we will search for clinical features uh, on the basis of this kind of organism. Tubercular meningitis. It is caused by Mycobacterium tuberculi. Infection with this bacterium begins usually in the lungs. One to two percent of cases, the bacteria travels by the bloodstream. Unlike other types of meningitis, it progresses very slowly, and symptoms are bulk. Viral meningitis, what is viral meningitis, also known as aseptic meningitis, more common than bacterial form and usually less serious. Less likely to have permanent brain damage after the infection resolves. Treatment, no specific treatment available, or even we can use antiviral drugs, various type of antiviral drugs. Most patients recover completely on their own. And what may be the clinical manifestations of meningitis? Initial symptoms, headache and fever. Headache either steady or throbbing and very severe as a result of meningeal irritation. Fever tends to remain high throughout the course of illness. Continue clinical manifestations. Meningeal irritation signs, new call rigidity, it is an early sign. Any symptoms at flexions of the head are difficult because of spasm in the muscle of the neck. There will be neck muscle spasm. So, neck will be stiff and it will not be easily rotated. And if we force, apply force for flexion, it causes severe pain. Meningeal irritation signs positive Kernig sign when the patient is lying with the thigh flexed on the abdomen the leg cannot be completely extended that is it will resist to the examiner if we look towards here it will resist his positive Kernig sign will be we will find in meningitis Meningeal irritation signs, positive Brzezinski sign, when the patient's neck is flexed, flexion of the knees and hip is produced. When the lower extremity of one side is passively flexed, a similar movement is seen in the opposite extremity. More sensitive indicator of meningeal irritation than Kernig signs. Positive Brzezinski sign is, is really a sensitive sign for, for meningeal irritation. This is the figure showing positive Brzezinski sign. How we can elicit a Brzezinski sign? Look. Flexion will cause pain and there will be a 
upper part of the legs here. Another signs of meningeal irritation is photophobia. There will be extreme sensitivity to light. If we look toward this face, two eyes are closed due to extreme sensitivity to light. Other some manifestations like rash, disorientation and memory impairment and auxiliary seizures may develop. If we gather all of the clinical signs and symptoms in a, in a slide, if we look at this here, central nervous system, headache, altered mental status, ear, phonophobia, eye, photophobia, that is dislike bright lights, and muscular fatigue, severe muscle pain, and on the in stomach there will be nausea and vomiting. And it's in systemic. There'll be high fever, seizure, neck stiffness, sleepiness, or difficulty waking. And if you examine skin, we'll find spots or rash, blood errors. These are the rare manifestation of raised endocrine fissures and signs of overwhelming septicemia may develop. So, when we will found a meningitis patient, we have to assess it and diagnose it accurately. Without accurate diagnosis, uh, it is it will be very hard for us to manage. So, history taking, physical assessment, and after that we can perform CT scan MRI to exclude other brain lesions, blood culture and sensitivity, and lumbar fracture. It is very much important. We have to perform, perform the lumbar fracture for CSF analysis. And with the help of CAF, CSF analysis, we can diagnose a case of meningitis. It is, is it viral, bacterial, or any other cause. So what will be the CSF finding? Normal CSF pressure, appearance, protein, glucose. If we perform gram staining, glucose CSF ratio, white cell count, and others. Pressure, centimeter water, 5 to 20 normal. Appearance normal. Protein, 0.1, to 0.45. Glucose 2.5 to 3.5 millimol per liter. Grand stream normal. Glucose CSF ratio 0.6 and white cell count less than 3. And if meningitis uh, due to bacterial cause, pressure increase, appearance will be changed to target protein. We increase and glucose less than 2.2. Glucose will be less. Gram staining, far from we can find 60 90 percent case positive, and glucose and CSF ratio is less than 0.4. White cell count as bacterial, it will be very, very increased. That is 90 percent polymorpho nuclear lymphocyte will be found in case of bacterial. In case of viral, patient may be normal or mildly increase. Appearance will be clear, protein decrease, glucose concentration will be normal, gram staining normal, and the glucose CSF ratio more than 0.6 and white cell count less than 1000. In the other case, we found 10% uh, more than 80% polyphenol increase and 30% of it case more than 50 percent polymorphonic lymphocytes. Tubercular fungal, fibrin clot may be found in case of TB, protein will be in case 0.1 to 0.5 and 
and glucose 1.6 to 2.5 that is glucose decrease look normal concentration it is 1.6 to 2.5 that it will be less than 2.5 that is the decrease glucose as a uh, serum uh, ratio less than 0.4 and white cell count 100 to 50 and monocyte may be found so a question may arise uh, to your mind that why this kind of changes may occur why protein concentration will be increasing bacterial because bacteria is eukaryotic it has cell walls and cell walls has protein so when there will be more bacteria more cell wall so there will be more protein on the other hand why less glucose the glucose will be less because after enter entering into the CSF circulation bacteria have to survive by taking CSF glucose so CSF glucose will be decrease and if it is in tubercular bacterial CSF glucose will be decreased but in case of tubercular and glucose concern will, will be more and more decreased than bacterial and glucose will be normal in case of viral because virus may not take glucose for their survival and as uh, protein bacteria virus has not a definite cell wall so protein will not be increased so I should I think you should uh, keep in your mind about this so if uh, there is a test for you CSF examination report how it can be interpreted this kind of uh, report will be given to your board examination even you may find in your SP examination and uh, clinical scenario may find in your written examination so I think it is this kind of report is really really important for you to for facing final professional examination so how it can be explained what is the diagnosis of it when it is due to viral bacterial or any other cause so if we go backward yes total protein increase sugar decrease more decrease and if we uh, look towards the WBC count polymorphs only 5% and lymphocytes 95% and if we look uh, if this is not available here in case of tuberculosis lymphocytes will be predominant and in case of bacterial polymorphonucleates lymphocyte will be predominant this neutrophil will be predominant so what may be the diagnosis of it yes this may be a case of tubercular meningitis in your final professional examination uh, you will face this kind of report so I think and uh, your student you all should go through the books and read CSF examination how to interpret a CSF examination report and what are the questions maybe you may find in your final written examination and in a board examination I think you should go through the books and read and just follow these classes it will be very effective for you to understanding and meningitis and CSF analysis and I think it will be effective one 
dear students uh, if you have a question to me just you can share it uh, to our uh, whatsapp group or you can in my facebook inbox you can send in a question to me i will try to answer it just collect more and more csf report and just interpret it from your own mind if you face any problem just let us know we will try to solve it in my next class inshallah we will again discuss uh, regarding your